from St. Paul's Baptist Church. Here's the scoop. The doors of our church are open. We invite you to join us for worship each weekend at 9 a.m. at St. Paul's North, at 10 a.m. online, or at 11.30 a.m. at St. Paul South. Please review the updated reopening strategy on our website at myspdc.org or by scanning the QR code for details on attending in-person worship. To join us online, download our mobile app or join us at myspbc.tv, Facebook, YouTube, Roku TV, and Apple TV. To join us by phone, call 855-905-7023. To subscribe, please press number one when prompted, and you'll receive a call each week when worship and Bible study goes live. Sunday School for Imagination Children and SMB students is now open at St. Paul's North. Students can find a Sunday School group by visiting myspbc.org or by scanning the QR code on the screen. We give praise to God for our new members in 2022. Every new member, kids and adults are required to complete our DNA class. It's a one day, 90 minute virtual introduction to our church family. Visit myspbc.info slash DNA for our class dates and times. We invite all families that have been blessed with a child in the last two years to join us for the last in-person baby dedication of the year, taking place Sunday, October 30th. Register your child. Please visit myspbc.info slash child dedication or scan the QR code. Fall Bible study has begun, and we start with a new message called If Money Talked this Thursday at 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. on our mobile app, myspbc.tv, Facebook, YouTube, Roku TV, and Apple TV. If you invited money to pull up a chair and give you its best advice, you might be surprised that what it would say is pretty close to what Jesus did say 2,000 years ago. It turns out that the secret to financial security isn't a secret. It's just not at all what we expect. In this study, our senior pastor, Dr. Lance Watson, offers an approach to money management that will make your life better and make you better at life. Whether you have a lot or a little, or a saver, you'll find these insights challenging, refreshing, and extraordinarily practical. Next Sunday, we begin a new series entitled, More Than Us. Culture tells us we are strong and that we can do anything. But at some point, we all come to terms with the limits of life. We encounter limits in our circumstances, our bodies, our intellect, our finances, and our entire beings. Whether it's depression, physical suffering, job demands, or even general busyness, life limits us. However, the incredible news of Scripture is that although we are limited, God is not. And God is able to do amazing things with us, in us, through us, and for us as we partner with God. God is more than us. That's the message of this exciting new series. Join our senior pastor, Dr. Lance Watson as he leads us to discover and exchange our limited for God's unlimited. Hello, St. Paul family. My name is Coleman Wimbish, and I'm a part of the Men Talk Small group. I decided to join the Men Talk Small group because I enjoy to study the Bible. I decided to stay with the Men Talk Small group because I enjoyed the fellowship that I had with brothers who also enjoy studying the Word of God and praying for one another. The fall semester for groups has begun. We have a variety of groups that meet throughout the week. Visit myspbc.info slash find a group to find a group you love. Thank you for your time and attention. This has been The Scoop. You are my refuge in truth.
trouble or in need and with you on my side I know everything will be alright oh I Everything will be all right if not for you. Can anybody testify in here and say, I never would have made it in all my trials. You pulled me through. Can anybody look back over your life and say, though I've been down, Forsaken, everything will be all right. Anybody believe it today? Every, everything will be all right. It's gonna be all right. Yes, Lord. Like this one, everything say everything will be all right. Whose report do you believe? We say everything will be all right. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver you out of them all. Every single thing is gonna be the whole should encamp against me. And
the lie of the enemy. Your life is worth it. You've got more purpose in you. You've got more vision in you. Life is worth the living just because she St. Paul's everywhere. This is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice. I shall rejoice. I command my spirit to rejoice. Will you rejoice with me wherever you are and be glad in it? Let us pray. Precious, merciful, everlasting, and eternal God, we, your sons and daughters, enter into your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. God, we thank you and we praise you for we are fearfully and wonderfully made. God, we thank you for your goodness and your grace. God, we thank you for your grandeur and your glory. God, we thank you for your love and kindness. God, we thank you for looking beyond our faults and meeting our every needs. And God, your word says that you inhabit the praises of your people. So come King of glory and take your seat in our midst. You are welcome in this place. You are welcome in this space. Do what you want to do, how you want to do it. We say yes on today. Yes to your will and yes to your way. Holy Spirit, reign mighty in us. Hey, reign mighty in us. Reign mighty in this service. God, we love you on today. God, we magnify you on today. God, we exalt you on today. Breathe fresh on us. Breathe fresh on our senior pastor. Step. Breathe fresh on our first lady. God, you are welcome in this place. Have your way in us and through us on this day and every day. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Welcome, St. Paul's Everywhere. I am Reverend Michelle Townsend life stage pastor of those fantastic 40-somethings. And on behalf of our senior pastor, Dr. Lance Watson, First Lady Rose Watson, and the entire kingdom of God, we greet you with Jesus' joy, for the joy of the Lord is truly our strength. We are so excited that you have chosen to worship with us on today as we celebrate and honor our amazing First Lady Rose Watson. For 37 years, she has served faithfully alongside our pastor, modeling for us love, generosity, support, and sacrifice. She is a woman of God. She is a prayer warrior. She is a wife and a mother. She is a singer and a producer. She is an entrepreneur who alongside our senior pastor, parents three adult children and five grandchildren. Let the record show she is a phenomenal woman. And we pause on today to celebrate and pay homage to her for the gift that she is to us and to the body of Christ. Will you join us in the spirit of 2 Corinthians 8 and 4, as it says, let us show our love and appreciation. Will you join us in that act by simply giving her and donating and sewing into her a special birthday gift during our offering. If you're giving digitally, simply open your camera app, scan the QR code, type on, tap on it, and scroll down to First Lady and add your gift. If you're writing a check, simply write First Lady in the memo section and mail it to the address listed above. However you do it, we thank you for your generosity in helping us celebrate our amazing First Lady, Rose Watson. 
Now, will you help us celebrate each other and greet each other by simply acknowledging and greeting each other in the chat space, using uh, your life stage colors, comments, and emojis as we prepare our hearts to continue to worship God in spirit and in truth. For the Lord is good and God's mercy endures forever. To God be the glory. I am grateful and everything is well with my soul. Anybody else that is content? Sometimes life doesn't go as we plan or as we'd like, but it's still well. God still has a purpose for everything. And we have to trust him for the in-between. When peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll, oh, will be well God sees to it that I'm well in my soul it is well it is well with my soul with Should 
us through the storm. Thankful, thankful, you covered our families and we're so thankful. It's gratefulness. It's flowing from my heart. Thank you for life, health, and strength, and for being strong. Tower for me and my weakest hour. I'm grateful, 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 gratefulness. with C.C. Winans when she sang to the Lord, all my life you've been faithful, all of my life you've been so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing, I will preach, I will shout, I will tell of the goodness of the Lord because God's goodness and mercy is running after me. Hallelujah and thank you God. What a joy it is to share with you today. St. Paul's everywhere and I'm happy to announce there is a word from the Lord on this day where we celebrate our First Lady Rose Watson. Would you help me to applaud her in the chat space? Give her a happy birthday shout out as we celebrate her today and her years of sacrificial love, support, generosity, and service to the St. Paul's Baptist Church family and community. Travel with me now to the textual territory that is Mark chapter one, and I'd like to read in your hearing verses 12 and 13 out of the New King James Version of the Bible. Thinking about this day, First Lady Day, we want to tag this text with the title, Everybody Needs an Angel. And this is the word of God. Immediately the Spirit drove him, Jesus, 
into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and was with the wild beasts. And the angels ministered to him. The word of God for the people of God, all praise be to God. John McGraw, a tough character who managed the New York Giants baseball team back in the early 1900s, ran his ball club like a dictatorship. His nickname, in fact, was Little Napoleon. He didn't tolerate back talk and woe to the player who made the mistake of missing one of his signs from the sidelines. McGraw inspired fear and respect in his players. During one game, John McGraw's wife was sitting in the stands and wanted to relay a message to her husband. She started gesturing towards one of the players, waving at him to come over to her, but he didn't see her and he walked away. Mrs. McGraw waved some more, but to no avail. After the game, Mrs. McGraw saw the player and said to him, in mild exasperation, didn't you see me waving at you? I was trying to get your attention. The player, turning pale, responded, good grief, Ms. McGraw, don't tell me you're giving signs too. The player's reaction is similar to what happens to many people when it comes to the subject of angels. We are so busy looking in one direction that we are oblivious to a second sphere of existence that's in close proximity, waving in our face, summoning our attention. Angels are real, and angels are relevant to you and me in our efforts to achieve victory in this life. That's the tale of the text we are teaching today. Immediately preceding the entry of Jesus into his public ministry, scripture scripts a scene where he had to endure a time of intense and terrible temptation by the adversary in the wilderness. It is worth noting that the enemy attacked Jesus at the beginning, at the onset, at the genesis, at the start of his ministry because he recognized the potential that was present in his life. Can I stick a pen right there? Because that very well could be the case with many of you listening to me right now. You've been wondering what you did wrong to cause things to transpire the way they have, to cause you to have to struggle like you do. But I've come to tell you today, albeit virtually, that it may not be what you've done wrong, but what you've done right that lies at the center of your fight. Mischievous children don't throw sticks and stones at fruitless trees. If the adversary is attacking you, it could be something you've done right. It could be the assignment that's ahead of you or the promise that's hanging over you and the pregnant potential that lies within you that demands the enemy try to stop you. Because like Jesus, if you ever come into your own, you'll be a force with which he will have to deal. The adversary attacked Jesus in advance of his public ministry, laboring to disqualify him before he ever became who God created him to be. Count him out before he's ever counted in and pervert his purpose before he ever got to pursue it. In Matthew's telling of this time period, Jesus is tested immediately after his baptism and God permits it because the text tells us that immediately the spirit drove him into the wilderness. For 40 days, he engaged in this multi-dimensional fight. The enemy enticed him to engage in self-preservation, self-elevation, and self-determination to demonstrate his sovereignty, to gain sustenance and status. The adversary assaulted him physically, emotionally, and mentally in an attempt to twist his identity, warp his authority, and prioritize his provision. While the author of Mark's gospel does not reveal the results of Jesus' temptation, we do know from other scriptural sources that Jesus was victorious. Jesus was successful. Jesus did overcome. 
the writer of Hebrews 15 would later testify, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, here it is, yet without sin. Jesus prevailed. Jesus was victorious. Jesus was successful. Jesus overcame. And one of the critical keys to his survival and success is disclosed in verse 13 of Mark chapter 1. Listen to what it says, and the angels ministered to him. Jesus was in duress and under stress. Jesus was being tempted, tried, and tested by the enemy. Yet Jesus was able to ace the exam because God had commissioned and commanded angels to minister to him through it and on the other side of it. Here's the big idea today that you cannot miss. Everybody needs an angel. I need 413 of you to drop in the chat space, I-K-T-R, for I know that's right. Let me say it again. Everybody needs an angel. Do you know why? Because they provide the sacred support needed to empower us to overcome in the battles of life. Can we shout there or do we have to wait a while? Because I repeat, Everybody needs an angel because they provide the sacred support needed to empower us to overcome in the battles of life. Can I help you with this? Let's start perhaps with a definition of angels. Angels, as we see in this scene in scripture, are aids sent by God to assist those that love God in achieving victory. Don't miss this. Angels can be heavenly beings. Everybody say together, heavenly beings. In Isaiah chapter 6, the prophet proclaimed, in the year King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it, here it is, stood seraphim, each one had six wings. With two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his feet. And with two, he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. Angels are described here as heavenly beings. To say that they are heavenly means they may not necessarily be visible, but that does not mean that their work is not essential. Just because you can't see them does not mean you don't benefit from them. Can I give you an example? Right now, in whatever space you occupy, there are literally millions of radio waves, microwaves, sound waves, infrared and ultraviolet rays. You don't see them, but it's because of them that you can log on to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth your device or quickly heat up your food. This is Sunday School 101. It's what our teachers were trying to teach us when they taught us in Sunday school to sing all night and all day. Angels are watching over me, my Lord. We cannot always see them, but angels are present and working on our behalf. And let me just pull over to this curb long enough to announce I still believe in angels. Have I got a witness online? In this age of snide skepticism and cold cynicism, in this time of disbelief and doubt, with six earned degrees from significant accredited universities, I still believe in angels. Let me put it where you can get it. It wasn't your seatbelt that saved you when your car wrecked. It wasn't just medication that kept you and healed you during your season of sickness. It wasn't just your driving skills that got you home when you left the club tipsy and should not have been behind the wheel. It was God's angels. Angels can be heavenly beings, but come close. Angels can also be human beings. Everybody everywhere say human beings. As a matter of fact, in scripture, humans are often referred to as angels of God. 
in Genesis 18, three men showed up at the tent of Abraham and Sarah to announce that Sarah would have a son at the tender age of 90. Angels can be human beings. Perhaps that is why the author of Hebrews 13, 2 instructed the faithful living in diaspora this way. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by this some have entertained angels without knowing it. Angels can be heavenly beings, but angels can also be human beings because God can use anybody at any time to do anything God chooses. God can use pastors and preachers, members and missionaries, teachers and therapists, doctors or delivery persons, lawyers or leaders, the outstanding or the ordinary in an angelic way to achieve God's eternal purpose. Remember the definition, angels are aid sent by God to assist those that love God in achieving the victory. And on a personal note, I know something about angels, and I've got a sneaky suspicion and a funny feeling to quote my friend Dr. Marcus Cosby that I'm not all by myself. I know something about angels. Is there anybody online who can say me too? Drop it in the chat space. I know something about angels. I praise God that for the first 50 years of my life, I was never hospitalized, never had stitches, never had a broken bone. Hallelujah and thank the Lord. For the first 50 years of my life, my health was relatively perfect. Then in my 50s, my situation shifted. I was diagnosed with cancer and scheduled for surgery for the first time in my life in my 50s. Now here's the truth. I was prayerful, but I was also petrified. Can I be that honest with you? I was sure, but I was also scared. On the morning of my surgery, I never will forget this. They took me in to prep me. I'm laying there on the gurney, and the guy who came to prep me came in, and he had on these huge bifocals and appeared to be working with only one good arm. I'm saying to myself as I'm laying there, they can't be serious. He's going to shave me. He can barely see, and he's only working with one arm. And while I'm struggling with those thoughts in my head, he leans over and says, is it all right? If I pray for you, I am stunned by the question. But then he continued. He said, I know you're concerned because of my arm and my glasses, but let me tell you my story. I was in a life-threatening car accident. The doctors didn't think I was going to live, but my mother told me, if you pray, God will spare your life. I prayed, and just as mama said, I survived. But my arms and my eyes were both damaged. I had a hard time finding employment. And when I applied for this job, it didn't look like they were going to choose me, but I prayed about it. And I told the Lord, if you give me this job, I promise that I'll pray for every person I prep. So I wanted to know, I wanted to ask you if I could pray for you. That broke me wide open. Could I get 52 of you to type wide open? Because lying there on the gurney with his brother with a huge bifocals and one arm that did not appear to be workable, I began to think about how God knew before the foundations of the world that I was going to be discovered with cancer, that I was going to need surgery, and that going in the surgery, I would be prayerful but petrified. I would be secure but also scared, and that I would need encouragement. And before I ever arrived, he had assigned this brother working with huge bifocals at one arm who knew what it was to be hospitalized, who would be courageous enough to ask me, can I pray for you. I know something about angels. Verse 13, 
and the angels came and ministered to him. Everybody needs an angel. That includes you too, because angels are aids sent by God to assist those who love God in achieving the victory. Angels can be heavenly beings or angels can be human beings that God chooses and uses to achieve God's purpose. That's the definition. But what do angels do? Can we look at that for a moment? Can we examine the duties of an angel? Number one, angels are ministers. Everybody everywhere say ministers. I'm in the Bible. Hebrews 1.14 states, are they not all ministering spirits sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation? Angels are ministers available to all who are saved or will be saved. In fact, according to Matthew 18.10, angels are assigned to specific people. Jesus said, see that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you that their angels in heaven continually see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Angels are our ministers. Notice verse 13, and the angels came and ministered to him. This word in the Greek minister here means to attend, to meet, or to serve one's needs. The angels provided ministry and Jesus received it. Don't miss that. This is important, my friends, because Jesus is the consummate minister. Jesus is the penultimate servant, and yet he permitted himself to be ministered to by the angels. You don't hear me yet. May God deliver us from people who feel that they can follow Christ, but they don't need anybody else to minister to them. Everybody needs somebody and nobody is perfect. I need another IKTR in the chat space for I know that's right. Everybody needs somebody and nobody is perfect, full stop. So if you're waiting on somebody perfect to minister to you, you're going to be waiting a very, very long, long time because nobody on this planet is perfect. Can I help you here to see this? How many of you listening to me have ever ordered a pizza? Go on, drop it in the chat space. Say pizza. Just type it out. Pizza. They'll know what you're talking about. P-I-Z-Z-A. How many of you have ever ordered a pizza. Most of you who are listening to me now have ordered a pizza. How many of you have ordered a pizza? Here's my question. What would you think if the delivery person showed up at your door with a hot, delicious, steaming pizza and they were holding it in their hand? Did you hear me? A hand that you are not sure has been washed, has been sanitized, and is not covered with a glove. What would you think if the delivery person where you had ordered your pizza showed up at your door with a hot, delicious, steaming pizza, and they're holding it in their hand? You don't know where their hand has been. They are holding it in their hand. I guarantee, no matter how many pepperonis, no matter how many peppers it contained, no matter how many different types of cheeses it had on it, no matter whether it's thin crust or deep dish or what kind of thickness or crust it happened to be, I can almost guarantee that if the delivery person shows up at your door with a hot, delicious, steaming pizza holding it in their hand, your first question is going to be, Where's the box? Watch this. The boxes that they deliver pizza in are not worth much. Bought in bulk, each box is probably worth less than $1. And yet the box, as inauspicious as it is, performs a critical task. The box doesn't give value to the product. 
It's the product that gives value to the box. Don't miss it. You wouldn't order a box all by itself. You only want the box because it contains the product that you have requested to have delivered. Follow me here. Because as ministers and members, we just the box. God is the pizza. If we're in our place and playing our position, little attention will be drawn to us because we are not the target. We are not the goal. The target, the goal, is the hot, delicious, steaming pizza. Here it is. Don't be so sidetracked by the package that you miss the product. Wait, Paul said it better than I could in 2 Corinthians 4, 7, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels, in broken pots, in cracked pots, that the excellency of the power might be of God and not of us. We are only now, my friends, emerging out of more than two years of struggling through a global pandemic. And if nothing else is clear to us, we should be clear on the fact that we can no longer be casual about our connection with Christ or our connection with his church. Yes, get it right. The church belongs to Christ. It's not my church. It's not your church. It doesn't belong to the bishop, the priest, the pope, or the pastor. The church, all capital letters, belongs to Jesus Christ. Somebody type his name in the chat space. Jesus Christ. Matthew 18, he said, upon this rock, watch this, I will build my church. That's Jesus speak. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We all need somebody to minister to us. Ministry is not an elect course in the kingdom of God. And that's why weekly worship, whether online or on site, is critical. We are to celebrate the goodness of God in worship. That's why participation in and connection to a small group is vital. We are to connect with others in groups. You need somebody to minister to you and to your children. My friend, Dr. Ralph West, who leads the prominent and distinguished and growing and evolving church without walls in Houston, Texas once said, it's a shame that parents will take their children to the dentist to get a cavity filled in their tooth, but won't bring them to church to have that cavity filled in their heart. Ministry is a required course in the kingdom of God. If Jesus, our sable-skinned savior, if Jesus, the hope of the hopeless, if Jesus, a way out of no way, if Jesus, light in the darkness, if Jesus, miracle worker, way maker, light in the darkness, needed to be ministered to, you know you need it. We are to cultivate our spirituality through the disciplines of a daily devotional life. We are to care for each other and the world. We are to contribute our money and our minutes to the expansion of the kingdom of God. Ministry is not an elective course in the kingdom of God. Nobody should have to beg us to participate, especially given all that God has already done for us. When you think about how God has saved you, kept you, taught you, brought you, never left you, it's a privilege to praise God and to serve others in the name of God. Can I have an amen right there? If Jesus needed the ministry of angels to get the victory, what about you and me? Verse 13, and the angels minister to him. Angels are ministers and angels are messengers. The beauty of Mark's gospel is that he highlights the humanity of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was and is holy, but it's encouraging to remind ourselves that he was also human. Saint Athanasius said it better than I ever could. He said, God became what we are in order to make us what he is. He was human 
in order to reach us, but holy in order to save us, human in order to identify with us, but holy in order to identify us with God, human in order to lay his hands on us, but holy in order to connect our hands with God's, human in order to come down where we are, but holy in order to lift us up where he is, human in order to touch us, but holy in order to transform us, human in order to comfort us, but holy in order to change us, human in order to understand us, but holy in order to unite us, human in order to cry with us, but holy in order to give us joy in the midst of sorrow. Jesus Christ was human, and in his humanity, he had to battle through moments of weakness. In his humanity, he had to struggle with his own vulnerability. You're not ready for this, but in the passage that we are proclaiming, he's on a pilgrimage through the wilderness. He's in a place of deprivation, separation, and isolation, and he's been in this spot for a while, but the angels came and minister to him. Hallelujah. How did they do it? Well, part of the way in which God works in our weakness is to send angels, both heavenly and human, to speak words of encouragement, enlightenment, and empowerment into our lives. Words that may sound like, I know you want to give in, but don't do it. Remember who you are. I know you want to do to them what they did to you, but let it go and leave them in the hands of God. Words that may sound like you're too big to be little. You're too powerful to be petty. Remember your assignment. I know you're fighting fatigue and frustration. I know you want to give up given what you've been given out, but hold on anyway. Stay focused. Stay committed. There's a bright side somewhere. Joy will come in the morning. They that wait on the Lord will renew their strength. No weapon formed against you can prosper. He that dwells, she that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You just can't give up now. You've come too far from where you started from. Angels are messengers who in our weakness speak words of encouragement, enlightenment, and empowerment. And we may not want to admit it, but it's a challenge for God to send angels to some of us because we gravitate towards messengers who tell us what we want to hear rather than what we need to hear. We like messengers who will co-sign our dysfunction and validate our delinquency. And that's a challenge for many because we want a faith that only gives, not a faith that will guide. Commenting on the corruption of his time, the Old Testament book of Judges says everyone did what was right in their own eyes. Everybody had their own agenda, created their own truth, and applauded their own attitudes and actions. But I think it was Thomas Paine who once said and wrote that anybody who is accountable to nobody should not be trusted by anybody. You've got to get that. I'd rather be hurt by the truth than comforted by a lie. The truth may hurt a little while, but a lie will hurt forever. We've got to learn afresh how to welcome truth tellers into our lives, people who will tell you when you're going astray, when you're about to make a mistake, when you're wasting a perfectly good opportunity. Angels are aids sent by God to assist those that love God in achieving victory. And the angels, minister to him. Angels are ministers. Angels are messengers. But thirdly, angels are missionaries. That is to say that as missionaries, their mission is mobile. Can I say it differently? God assigns an angelic presence wherever you are. That ought to comfort somebody listening to me. Jesus didn't live in the wilderness he was progressively passing through the wilderness and angels were assigned to him. New Testament professor Dr. Michael Newhart said, God made sure that angels followed Jesus everywhere he went so that Jesus could complete his assignment. 
God's angels are not limited by location. And that's good news for somebody listening to me. Please grab it. Because if God provided you, my friend, with angelic resources in your last location, God is able to provide them in your next location. If God sent an angel of support to open a door for you pre-COVID, then God is able to send an angel of support to open a door for you post-COVID. If God blessed you with a job, a business, a contract, in the past, God is more than able to bless you with even more in your future. If God sent an angel of companionship in your last relationship, God can provide an angel of compassion in your new relationship. Please take hold of this truth because somebody listening to me is terrified in this season to make the shifts and pivots that are plotted in your path because you're still stuck on an angel from your past. I stood up to tell you today that your future is never tied to somebody who left in your past. When somebody's part in your story is over, resist the temptation to pencil them in to your next chapter. You don't need their approval and you should not fear their disapproval. You don't need their validation. Validation is for parking not for people, and life is way too short to leave the key to your happiness in somebody else's pocket. Did you hear what I said? The light on your dreams turned green a long time ago, but you're still holding on to the brakes at the stoplight waiting for somebody else to give you the go-ahead. You better hit the gas. Where's Rihanna when you need her? Shut up and drive. This is how Paul said it, forgetting those things that are behind. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That's not behind me. That's ahead of me. Your destiny is not in the wilderness. It's beyond the wilderness. The wilderness is just a place you have to pass through. And God has already dispatched new people, new help, new plans, new assistance, and new resources for your new blessing. Do I have any witnesses online? You may not know who where, when, or how your wilderness trek will conclude. But it's not your job to figure it out. It's your job to walk it out and watch God work it out. Everybody needs an angel, and what we need, God will provide. Angels met Jesus in the wilderness because Jesus never permitted his wilderness pilgrimage to disconnect him from God's presence. You got to grab that. Let me say it differently. Angels will always be present where God's presence is prioritized. Did you hear what I said? No matter what what you're facing today. Stay connected to God. Stay connected to God's church. Stay connected to God's presence. Pursue God's presence. I don't know how you feel about it, but I need God's presence. I wish I had five witnesses. I only need 10 people to testify that I can't live without him because I know too much about him. I need God in the morning. I need God at noonday. I need God at midnight because God's presence is desired. God's angels will be distributed. Okay, let me come at it like this. I love Super Bowl commercials. I know many of you do too. And one of my favorite Super Bowl commercials of all time was done by Budweiser. In this commercial, there's a baby Clydesdale horse that is outside of a barn admiring a picture of two older Clydesdale horses pulling a huge stagecoach. He imagines in his mind the baby horse He imagines himself pulling one. And in the next scene of the commercial, that baby Clydesdale has entered the barn and is trying to put himself in a harness so that he can pull that huge stagecoach 
inside the barn. He pulls and he pulls, but nothing happened. While he is pulling, though, the camera flips to the back of that huge stagecoach, and you notice two older Clydesdale horses watching the baby horse unproductively and unsuccessfully try to pull that huge stagecoach. The camera then shifts back to the baby Clydesdale horse, and all of a sudden, to the shock of everybody, he begins to move forward with that huge stagecoach. I'm shocked myself watching at it. I thought he deserves an applause. He did it. That baby Clydesdale is pulling the coach. I thought that until the camera shot switched back to the back of the stagecoach and showed the two older horses pushing that coach from behind. I wonder, is there anybody listening to me now who can testify that in so many moments of your life, you were able to do what you did, win what you won, accomplish what you accomplished, not because of your strength, not because of your power, not because of your capacity, not because of your network, but you had somebody pushing you from behind. Somebody ought to type right now, that's how I made it, that God had angels pushing me from behind when I wanted to quit, when I wanted to stop, when my feet almost slipped, when my enemies had almost gotten the best of me, when I didn't think I could take it, when I didn't believe I could make it. God had angels pushing me from behind. Is there anybody listening to me who can testify that God did it? Everybody ought to type it if your fingers work. God did it. Didn't he do it? Now under him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ask, think, or imagine. Somebody ought to say it out loud. He's able, he's able to pay bills. He's able to heal bodies. He's able to mend relationships. He's able to connect people. He's able to elevate you. He's able to motivate you. He's able to elevate you. He's able to motivate you. He's able to liberate you. He's able to get you approved for things that you don't qualify for. He's able to get you assigned to positions where you don't belong. He's able to get you appointed to roles for which you weren't intended. I'm done, but I want to stream long enough just to encourage you today to pursue God's presence because where God God's presence is desired. God's angels will be distributed. How do you know, preacher? It happened for Jesus. Angels showed up at his birth. Angels strengthened him through his temptation. And angels rolled the stone away preceding his resurrection. Angels provided instructions after his ascension. And angels will be with him one day when he returns and one of these days when time like a weary traveler will lay its head in the bosom of eternity when the sun will burn out like a cinder when the moon will lay its crimson coat on the gray shabby shoulders of the clouds when the rocks will break up and the mountains will skip like lambs when Gabriel, an archangel, will poke his glowing trumpet through the blue vaulted dome of the sky and blow it loud until the dead rise up and the saints go marching in. When Uriel will ride down from heaven with a rainbow wrapped around his head, put one foot on the land and one foot on the sea, when from Mount Pisgah's lofty heights I view my home and take my flight and shout while passing through the air, farewell, 
farewell, sweet hour of prayer. I want to be there with the angels to thank God for every dark day, every trying moment, every bitter disappointment, every rough road, every dark midnight, because through it all, I said through it all, through it all, I've learned how to trust in Jesus. Through it all, I've learned how to depend on God. Angels are watching over me and everybody needs an angel. And the good news is the angel of the Lord goes before you and goodness and mercy, y'all remember them, are following you all the days of your life. Can you shout hallelujah? Can you say yes? Can you give God glory that angels are watching over you because everybody needs an angel. And the good news is, if you love the Lord, you've got one. Let us pray. God, we give you the glory and the honor and the praise that you have not assigned us to this life or to our task or to our assignment alone. But you sent angels, sometimes heavenly, sometimes human, as messengers, as ministers, as missionaries, to be with us as we seek to do your will. We thank you for the victory that is already ours because of your presence and the presence of angels to aid us along the way. Bless us now, we pray, as you already have. In Jesus' name, amen. And I want to extend an invitation to you, my brother, my sister, to acknowledge the presence of not only angels, but God in your life every single day. All your life, God has been faithful. All your life, God has been so good. And this is your moment to say yes to the goodness of God, to welcome the presence of God and God's angels into your life that you might achieve victory as Jesus did. It's not difficult. It's not hard. All you got to do is A, admit you need God. B, believe that he sent Christ to the planet to die for you and raise them on the third day for your justification, to make you right in life and in the world and with God. And C, confess it with your mouth. D, do it right now. On the screen, there are instructions. All you've got to do is use your digital device. Text the word JOIN to 804-643-4769. As the music is shared, this is your moment. We are praying for you. There's a whole team of people on standby waiting to respond to you. Do it right now. If you take one step towards God, he'll take 10 towards you. If you don't feel that you can do it, ask God for an angel. And the angels will minister to you. God is able to do just what he said he would do. Please hear my heart. He's going to fulfill
grateful for the things that God has done. I am grateful for the victories that we've won. I could go on and on and on talking about God's works because I'm grateful. Is there anybody listening to me online who is grateful for God's glory, blessing, and presence in your life? Is there anybody online who can testify, God has been good to me? It is because of the goodness of God that we are moved to be generous people. 
we share in the grace of giving because we understand that one of the fundamental principles, it is universal, it, it covers the entire planet without exception, that what is sown is what is reaped, that what is planted is what is harvested. And so today we prepare to give our tithe and our offering as a seed into the soil of the kingdom of God, anticipating that God will honor his word and keep his promise to raise up a harvest that we cannot contain. And it's easy to give at St. Paul's. All the ways to give are listed on the screen. Perhaps the easiest manner in which to give is just to use your digital device. Pull out that cell phone, open up the picture app, Get that QR code in the picture app, tap on it, and it will take you to the exact place where you can give your tithe, you can give your offering. We thank you for your generosity. It is because of the generous gifts of people just like you in varying sizes and quantities and frequencies that our ministry is able to continue. We believe in a ministry that is extensive and comprehensive, so it makes sense that it's expensive, but we give glory to God that your generosity has provided all we need. So I encourage you now to give as God has given to you freely, happily, joyously, hilariously, and generously, knowing that God will bless your life. These are the words of Jesus. It's in, recorded in Acts 20, verse 35. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Ask yourself why, because if I have it to give, it's only because I've already received. So as we prepare to give, yes, as we prepare to give, both you and me, let us pray. Almighty God, we acknowledge your goodness, your grace, your mercy, your peace, and your power. We acknowledge that you always show up in the ways and in the places and in the manner that we need it most. We thank you for your precious provision in our lives. We thank you that when we needed it most, you sent angels to minister to us, to watch over us, to make ways for us, to open doors for us, to fight battles for us. And so today we bring our tithe and our offering as gifts of love and gratitude to declare through our actions that you are our number one priority, that we refuse to treat banks and bills and budgets better than we treat you. So bless now the gift and the giver. Thank you in advance for what you are about to do in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, our Redeemer, and our friend. We pray and we thank you. And all the people said together, amen. Say out loud as you prepare your gift, Lord, bless my tithe, bless my offering. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give unto the Lord with a spirit of gratitude. Cause you move mountains, tell them you cause one.
Everybody needs an angel. And we pause today in the conclusion of this worship celebration to thank God for the angel who has been present in my life for many, many years. Our first lady, Rose Watson. Thank God for the ways in which God has used her in the life of this pastor to be a minister, to be a missionary, to be a messenger. Thank God for the ways that God has used her in this congregation to do all of those things. Would you take a moment today and honor her? And if you are moved, give a gift to her by going to our giving app, scrolling down to First Lady Day and allowing God to move on your heart. It's been a joy to share with you today. We thank you for streaming with us and sharing this celebration. Would you pause now to share this stream with somebody who could benefit from this message? Would you download the GPS guide so that you can discuss this word and talk about the angels in your life with your family and your friends? Would you take a moment and click the like button? It moves our content up by the algorithm used by social media companies to determine which content shows up where. It'll show up in somebody's feed and you never know, it could change their life. And finally, my friend, would you share the benediction, the final and parting blessing with me? It's on the screen now. Let's share it together. I am because we are, and we are because God is. You are not alone. Never, 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 never alone. God is with you and so are we. We love you and there ain't a thing you can do about it except pray fervently, love genuinely, live authentically, and know everybody needs an angel and you've got one. God bless you real good. Till next time. From St. Paul's Baptist Church, here's the scoop. The doors of our church are open. We invite you to join us for worship each weekend at 9 a.m. at St. Paul's North, at 10 a.m. online, or at 11.30 a.m. at St. Paul's South. Please review the updated reopening strategy on our website at myspbc.org or by scanning the QR code for details on attending in-person worship. To join us online, download our mobile app or join us at myspbc.tv, Facebook, YouTube, Roku TV, and Apple TV. To join us by phone, call 855-905-7023. To subscribe, please press number one when prompted, and you'll receive a call each week when worship and Bible study goes live. 
Sunday School for Imagination Children and SMB students is now open at St. Paul's North. Students can find a Sunday School group by visiting myspbc.org or by scanning the QR code on the screen. We give praise to God for our new members in 2022. Every new member, kids and adults, are required to complete our DNA class. It's a one-day, 90-minute virtual introduction to our church family. Visit myspbc.info slash DNA for our class dates and times. We invite all families that have been blessed with a child in the last two years to join us for the last in-person baby dedication of the year, taking place Sunday, October 30th. Register your child. Please visit myspbc.info slash child dedication or scan the QR code. Fall Bible study has begun, and we start with a new message called If Money Talked this Thursday at 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. on our mobile app, myspbc.tv, Facebook, YouTube, Roku TV, and Apple TV. If you invited money to pull up a chair and give you its best advice, you might be surprised that what it would say is pretty close to what Jesus did say 2,000 years ago. It turns out that the secret to financial security isn't a secret. It's just not at all what we expect. In this study, our senior pastor, Dr. Lance Watson, offers an approach to money management that will make your life better and make you better at life. Whether you have a lot or a little, or a saver, you'll find these insights challenging, refreshing, and extraordinarily practical. Next Sunday, we begin a new series entitled, More Than Us. Culture tells us we are strong and that we can do anything. But at some point, we all come to terms with the limits of life. We encounter limits in our circumstances, our bodies, our intellect, our finances, and our entire beings. Whether it's depression, physical suffering, job demands, or even general busyness, life limits us. However, the incredible news of Scripture is that although we are limited, God is not. And God is able to do amazing things with us, in us, through us, and for us as we partner with God. God is more than us. That's the message of this exciting new series. Join our senior pastor, Dr. Lance Watson as he leads us to discover and exchange our limited for God's unlimited. Hello, St. Paul family. My name is Coleman Wimbish, and I'm a part of the Men Talk Small Group. I decided to join the Men Talk Small Group because I enjoy to study the Bible. I decided to stay with the Men Talk Small Group because I enjoyed the fellowship that I had with brothers who also enjoy studying the Word of God and praying for one another. The fall semester for groups has begun. We have a variety of groups that meet throughout the week. Visit myspbc.info slash find a group to find a group you love. Thank you for your time and attention. This has been The Scoop. Thank you for watching this service from the St. Paul's Baptist Church in Richmond, Virginia. Please look through our website, myspbc.org, to learn more about our church, about our vision, and how you can support our mission to empower people to grow into the persons that God created them to be.